and welcome to How Do You Drew? This is a Drew Barrymore podcast brought to you by the Drewzam.com. I'm Ashley. And I'm Anne. All right. Hi. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Um, we just finished a little upcoming cameo on another podcast, so that'll be fun. And we'll keep you updated on what that was. So this is our second podcast reporting of the day. Ooh, lots of closet time. <laughs> All right. So I think we're going to have a lot to cover in this episode as far as the topic. So we should probably power through all of our stuff at the top. Sounds great. Um, No oopsies. We're, we were perfect last week, apparently. <laughs> I mean, I think we're, we're usually perfect. But I have some follow-ups. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Let's hear it. So I finished listening to Lake Bell's audiobook Inside Voice, which I talked to you about last week. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was really cool and very interesting. I totally suggest anybody who cares about the voice to listen to it because it really talks about all kinds of different things. I learned a lot. Sounds awesome. Anyway, the reason we're here, Drew. <laughs> so she has like a little segment in the audiobook. It's like an interview with her. It starts off with playing three different impressions of her, which... I don't know how much we've talked about this. What are your feelings on impressions of Drew? Um, in general, I feel like impressions of her don't really sound like her. Yeah. And often really, really play up the lisp. And they play up the um, talking out of the side of the mouth thing, which I do notice it. But I guess that's kind of what an impression is, is playing up like something that's a little bit different about someone's like expression when they speak or someone's like tone. So but generally, I think they don't sound like her. <laughs> Yeah, I tend to feel, and this is the best way I can describe this, a lot of them are impressions of impressions of Drew. Mm -hmm. So it's not really so much like they sound like Drew, they sound like someone else's impression of Drew. So, <laughs> I mean, there are some, there is this woman, uh, her name is Angela Hoover. If you Google her name and Drew, I think she does the best Drew impression, like where you could almost close your eyes and think she was her. And she pays attention to like, interesting things about her that I think I don't know it's just very authentic she's my favorite but she's not like you know on tv all the time or something so she's not as known okay I mean I think Chloe Feynman's okay I think some of the things she gets are pretty good but like she doesn't sound like Drew to me mm -hmm. I think people try to get this essence of her and they'll use like words like so awesome like I'm doing I'm pr kind of purposely doing a bad impression I can't do an impression of her but they'll use like words like that's amazing or like maybe I'm thinking of like Kate Hudson's impression yeah like SNL leaned so heavily into the word magical which is like not <laughs> even something she says like yes <laughs> they use that so much but anyway so that's what they started off with then you know they talk about you know why her voice is the way she is and drew first of all said that the impressions are always very flattering to her and she she thinks they're funny but she also is like i don't really know what i sound like so i don't know if they're accurate which is kind of funny and then she said you know basically she thinks she talks the way she does number one because of when and where she was born and grew up so she's got the LA Valley girl, which mm -hmm. I'm not from LA, but I'm from Southern California and I'm guilty of the Valley girl talk too. It's just, <laughs> that's our accent. <laughs> I think I have it more strongly than you do, but, <laughs> and then she did like kind of talk about how she, she knows she has sort of a lisp and she knows mm -hmm. because of Jimmy Fallon telling her that she kind of talks out of the side of her mouth, but she wasn't really aware of those things until people started pointing them out. So she thinks like the structure of her face has something to do with her voice being what it is. But I thought that was interesting. That's super interesting. And I, I'll definitely listen to it. And then Lake, yeah. And then Lake asked her, you know, they talked a lot about Grey Gardens and doing that accent and then, and voice. And then she asked her if there were any accents that she felt like she kind of like tried and didn't really get. Okay. And I found this like a very cool reference because she doesn't talk about this very much. She said the Swedish accent from Wayne's World 2. <laughs> That's really funny. I know. So she said she didn't think that she got that one. Like she didn't think she nailed it. That was no. the question. Yeah. She's like, I sounded horrible, but it was such a like 
I was on for 30 seconds, so it doesn't really matter. But man, she sounded, they played the clip of it and it's crazy how young she sounds. She was obviously, but like yeah. to hear her talking present day, juxtaposed with her voice in Wayne's World 2, which was like 1992 or three. It was like shocking how young she sounded then. <laughs> so funny. Because, yeah, I mean, I am picturing, of course, that scene. I know it well from Wayne's World 2, but I haven't obviously listened to it recently. Cool. That sounds really cool. And I'm sure the, the rest of the book is probably pretty fun, too. So I'll have to check that out. Yeah, it was a good listen. That's pretty much it for follow-ups. But I did, like, I made a note. Because anytime she talks about something on the show where I'm like, oh, we should bring that up. You know, I'll just note it. Mm -hmm. So they were talking about like playing dead in uh, movies and stuff on Drew's news on the show. Mm -hmm. And she like, so her and Ross and the guests, they all like play dead. And she ha laid her head down on the desk and like had her eyes open. And she said that she always has to have her eyes open when she's playing dead because her eyelashes will flutter otherwise when she like closes her eyes. <laughs> So I was like, huh? And she's like, go watch. Anytime I'm playing dead, you'll see my eyes are open for that reason. And I was like, is that true? <laughs> and then, yeah, it checks out because I thought, you know, spoilers, but Poison Ivy, right? At the end, mm -hmm. which we just have looked at that scene recently because of our interview with the stuntman. Yep. Sketch artist. And then Scream. And then the only other movie where she plays dead is uh, there's like a dream sequence in Doppelganger where she's like in a casket. Do you remember this? No. And her eyes are closed in that. But I don't know. Maybe that one was more like because she was sleeping rather than a dead body. Truly. I don't know. <laughs> you know, what's kind of funny is that that makes me wonder. There are some people, including myself, who when they sleep, their eyes are not totally, totally closed. Like, yeah. In a relaxed state, like the eyes are like slightly open so i wonder if that's the case for her if it's like not natural for her to like completely close her eyes Maybe. i don't know it's just, it's just a thought <laughs> it doesn't seem strange that her eyes are open i know and it kind of makes more sense when someone dies like they don't like go to sleep yeah she's pretty much like murdered in all those movies so <laughs> yep <laughs> anyway i thought that was fun <laughs> totally all right so we have some really sweet mail today <laughs> you've got mail okay so this comes from our buddy timo so timo and his twin brother vaco i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly they have uh you know they're huge true fans they live in europe and they've been longtime supporters of us um over at the Drusium, which is really sweet and they're just so kind like they sent me um, like a German magazine recently she was on the cover of and mm -hmm. they're just really sweet and enthusiastic and they've gotten to meet Drew a couple times and she seems to love them like the twins like gets excited. So Aww. Uh, Timo sent over some really nice comments um, in regards to our episode last week with Tony Crago. Awesome. So I'll go ahead and read it. Great job. It's really such a good idea to do an interview. I'm so excited about your next episodes. Every time I hear your podcast, I feel better. I spoke about your podcast with Vaho, and he has the same feelings. Your podcast is so close to us, it seems that we are sitting, laughing, and discussing all these topics together with you guys. Thank you, Ashley and Anne. Oh, I love that. That was really sweet. I We were just actually kind of talking about how much we love when a podcast um, has like that sort of like casual discussion sort of feeling to it. And so we purposely and conveniently prefer this type of podcasting style where we kind of want our audience to feel like they're there with us. So I'm glad that that Absolutely. comes through. I mean, I think that's more natural to us anyways, as friends, like it would be very hard for us to feel very scripted and structured. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we totally. love hearing like that Drewbies are getting that same vibe. It's really fun. So thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, Ashley, can you tell me what's new with Drew? Okay, let's go through it. So if you recall, Tony had told us last week that he had just had dinner with Drew's current assistant, Christy, because they were in town in LA to film something. Mm -hmm. And he let me know that it was an ad for Pluto TV. So I think it's going to be a tie-in with the talk show somehow. 
it's nice cool. to know that she's like filming something new. So <laughs> there's like one photo that someone posted on Twitter or something that uh of like f- her on the street filming. So I'll share that. Oh, cool. Um, one thing about that actually, my mom on her TV has like a Pluto TV. I don't know if it's an app or what it is, but she was watching like a channel that's all just the Drew Barrymore show on Pluto TV. I have no idea how it works, but it said it was live TV on Pluto and it was only Drew's wow. show. <laughs> so there's something kind of cool through Pluto. So we're going to need to look into that a little bit more. Like literally when I clicked on it, it said like, almost like, did I want to favorite the Drew Barrymore channel? I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Interesting. Okay. We'll look into that. Then another new thing, and I still have to buy mine. I, this is a good reminder, but beautiful. Uh, Drew's cookware line released some candles this week. Oh, yeah. Do you think you'll actually burn them or just collect? <laughs> good question. <laughs> I haven't thought about it that far. I'm not sure. Depends on the scent. And would you actually get like one of each or do you think you'll just get your, your favorite color? I was color? planning on just getting one, but I don't know if you saw when you open the lid of the lidded ones, there's like writing from Drew on the bottom of the lid and it looks like they might all be different. So, ah. <laughs> oh, sounds like we got to get one of each. <laughs> like I saw one that said light up your life or something like that. Yeah. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. So we're going to have to be our own little fire starters and <laughs> play with some candles. <laughs> good call (laughs) um okay then i'm sure you saw drew posted that she has covid Mm -hmm. which is sad i feel like her show is so like cautious about it in fact the fact that all of the audience members are still masked is very interesting because i don't feel like most other shows that's the case but uh Mm -hmm. maybe she got it traveling back and forth from l.a Oh, good point. So Drew doesn't follow us on Instagram, and we feel very strongly that it's an oversight. (laughs) (laughs) Like, we think she thinks she follows us. (laughs) And it needs to be made known. Yeah, so, you know, because we seem to have some magical powers when with the words we put in this this podcast, we're going to say it right now that she needs to remedy that. But anyways, she does follow a lot of other fan accounts, which is, you know, a little painful to our hearts. But uh, (laughs) she follows one at Drew Barrymore Rebel, and she commented on something they wrote today about, like, sending her well wishes. And she said that she was in bed and watching The Crown. So I guess that's how she's recovering. And that's what she's up to right (laughs) now. (laughs) So if you really want an up-to-date up to the moment yeah. when was that that was today <laughs> as, we're, as we're recording so yeah so that's what's really new with Drew and and hopefully as we're saying this she's saying oh my gosh I don't follow the Drew Zeeam on Instagram I better fix this right now <laughs> you just sent her a, a telepathic message that she's not following us so <laughs> yeah hopefully that will be remedied before the episode yeah. comes out let's make this happen guys <laughs> It's going to happen. I'm manifesting it. Um, Okay, last thing. And this isn't so much news, but I thought this was really cool. So Drew had the lady who runs the popular Instagram account, Dumois. And it's funny because you had (laughs) asked me recently what that was because I'd sent you something that like Chris Miller was featured on it. Yeah. That was who she had on the Drew's News podcast this week. And uh, it's a fun listen. Go check it out. But anyway. I made a note of this because Dumois said that she had like started the account by asking people for their celebrity encounters and drew like really honed in on that word. And she was like, I love that you use the word encounter. Like she brought it up several times. And I thought that was Hmm. so cool because on our website, the drewzam.com, yes, (laughs) um, all of our use that word or seeing drew. That's the word. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. that gets a Drew approval. So I'm happy that we're, that's the word we've always used. (laughs) I love that kind of like lovely how she, how she has like these reactions to words. Like it's so her. Totally. (laughs) Okay. I think that pretty much wraps it up. Let's, let's get to the, 
as we haven't said in a while, the meat of the episode. The meat of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> This week's topic, I would say, is a biggie. I oh, yeah. think that us making a decision to tackle this um, was kind of like, well, I, we're going to have to do it. So <laughs> I guess it's time to do it. And Ashley took on the challenge. So what's our topic this week? Oh, boy. We are doing another year in review. And the year we have chosen is one of our absolute favorites. It's probably a lot of people's favorites in as far as like Drew's life. Mm-hmm. It's 1995. Woo! <laughs> Here we are. Here we are in this wonderful year during which neither Ashley nor I had discovered our be- our wonderful love for Drew. So this is pre our personal fandoms, but we know many people who are fans of this time and I ache that I was not aware of her in the way that I was just a few years <laughs> after. It is brutal that it like three years later, which is such a small amount of time when you think about it. Absolutely. We were like fully in the game because uh, this is this is a year. This is a year of movies, of magazines, of appearances, of looks like just man, everybody has a soft spot for 95 Drew. Yep. And if you don't, you're a loser. (laughs) (laughs) Get out of (laughs) here. JK, JK. (laughs) All right. So let's just like take it month by month. We're just going to kind of chronologically go through everything that was going on that crazy year. I feel like we should say that she had the short pixie haircut all year long and it started Mm -hmm. out really, really short in the beginning and then grew out throughout the year. It's kind of fun to track. Yep. And she was dating Eric Erlinson from Hole the entire year. Mm Mm-hmm. What else would you say, like, encompasses that whole time period? Hmm, let's see. Other than Pixie Cut and Eric Erlinson, I feel like there's something really specific about her fashion. Yeah, probably. Lots of, like, vintage-looking looks. Um, lots of, like, 70s-ish that we had a lot in the 90s. Um, mm-hmm. Just good stuff. A little grungy. Yeah, I feel like 94, 95, 96, about like chunk of years that bookend, you know, and include 95, there's just so many iconic looks and so many iconic, like, you already kind of said it, but like certain magazines and just like her whole mood, whole vibe and how out there she was in, as far as like media. She was like comfortable with herself in a way that oh maybe she didn't really seem yeah. like she had been well i mean if you really want to break it down like she was way more comfortable in her body and that's why we get a lot of nudity and flashing and <laughs> strip teasing that year that's right? very true <laughs> that's very true considering we start off the year with what <laughs> that's a great segue <laughs> yeah so the very first thing the year i mean probably this was released in December 94 because magazines always come out a month before they're dated but we'll just we got to include this the Playboy magazine came out and it's the January 1995 issue I mean iconic yeah like it still is somewhat surprising that she did that but not when you kind of see the other incredible photo shoots that we'll get into that were risque in a similar way but maybe more fun I don't know. I mean, Playboy is really fun. I would say, like, not that I've seen a ton of Playboy shoots, but hers is really beautiful, really fun, and somehow really Drew. Yeah, it's definitely, like, got a playful vibe, I think, because it was done by her fellow collaborator, Ellen Von Unworth, who has taken pretty much all of the best uh, Drew photo shoots that aren't Mark Seliger. Yes, you hear how I said that? <laughs> Seliger <laughs> good, good job. <laughs> um, thanks. I had to really think about it. <laughs> um, but Ellen's work with Drew is always amazing. And she worked with her a lot this year. There's like four or five photo shoots she did this mm-hmm. year alone with Drew, which is so fun. But uh, yeah, love. it's very playful. You get to see all her tattoos. You get to see uh, her cute little bod. <laughs> Yep. And then, you know, as we talked about in our tattoo episode, 
we had thought that this was the first kind of appearance of her butterfly and we kind of wanted to figure out like oh she had it earlier in 94 either way this is probably when we we really really got to see her butterfly for the first time was in playboy and we'll have to do a whole episode on the the magazine uh, totally eventually so just know that that's how the year's kicking off that kind of sets the tone (laughs) also we think drew and her fellow cast from boys on the side filmed a music video for for a bonnie Raitt doing a version of roy orbison's you got it um and in the video she's got her pixie cut there's a lot of like footage of her kind of dancing with her co-stars it's really actually really cute i mean it looks super 90s (laughs) like the visual of it is 90s filter (laughs) Yeah, it's a fun win. Okay, and then we're going to move on to February where things just really started boom, boom, boom because Boys on the Side came out February 3rd and Drew did a lot of press. She did, you know, the normal press junkets. She did it like an appearance on MTV. She Mm -hmm. uh, went on Tom Snyder and then her very first appearance on Late Show with David Letterman was for uh, promoting that movie. I hadn't thought about the fact that that was her first. And um, of course, I am pretty familiar, like immediately with the image, like the images from Tom Snyder and from Letterman. But I what I do, I feel like what I remember about the Letterman thing is like, and looking at the pictures, but she's got like a, um, a black button up shirt. And she, I don't think it's like, it seems like she's not wearing a bra because it's like very, like you can see a lot of her shoulders. Does that seem familiar? Yeah. I mean, I don't think she wore bras frequently in 95. (laughs) Yeah. Do you remember any like snippets from that episode of Letterman? Like I'm sure that they were flirty almost right away, but I can't remember anything from it specifically. There was definitely some flirting, and uh, you'll remember this. She talks about going on the cruise and jumping off the cruise ship. She tells that story. Of course. Yes. <laughs> Which we didn't really hear repeated in Wildflower, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So that's like the origin of knowing about that. And then, yeah, she wrote in depth about it in Wildflower, which was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> totally fun. Um, what is the t-shirt that she wore on Tom Snyder? It's like some kind of like um, comic book shirt or something, right? Yeah, it. I would think it's Superman. I'm pretty sure it was Superman. Okay. Um, so then she, we don't really know when, <laughs> when this happened. Maybe even like the next day, right around the same exact time, she showed up on Letterman again to do this like goofy skit where he... Do you, have you seen the whole thing? Yes. <laughs> so weird. Okay. So he like remember he's like in the middle of filming the show. He suddenly remembers he's late for something and he runs through the audience and he runs out the doors and he runs down the streets of New York. <laughs> and then he runs into this church because he has to get married and they do this reveal where he pulls up the veil and Drew's the bride and everybody goes crazy and they kiss. And she thought that was the best thing ever. <laughs> I wonder like what the impetus of that was like, <laughs> like oh, I would love to know more. I think in my mind, I always thought it was after the flashing episode. Um, but looking at the images we have of it, her hair is really short. It definitely looks more like right after yeah. the episode. But either way, it's so cute. <laughs> like it's so, and I think Drew just like giggles. I don't think she even says anything in the clip, right? Yeah, she doesn't even talk. Nope. <laughs> he just says, I do. And then kisses her and everybody goes, ah, because it's Drew Barrymore. <laughs> so and then funny. doesn't he like run back to the show? I don't even remember. Or does it go to like commercial break? Either way, it's just like, it's the tiniest clip. Like, I feel like it's like you only see her for like maybe 30 seconds. Like, it's very yeah. <laughs> like. It's and it's though. hilarious. <laughs> Obviously, they weren't actually getting married, but it's really uh, hilarious. <laughs> okay, so that was a good one. <laughs> and then she also celebrated her 20th birthday, and she talks about it a lot because Steven Spielberg sent her the cover up with the Playboy, and uh, she just like <laughs> felt very loved and looked around the table and loved all her friends. And yeah, she's only 20, which is wild crazy that she was only turning 20 
Um, the other really cool thing that came out at the beginning of 95 were ads that Drew did for Miu Miu started to appear in magazines in um, March and they were advertising like spring and summer styles of Miu Miu and they're so amazing. Were these, do we know who was the photographer for these? Of course, it's Ellen Von Wenworth. Of course it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm... I love these ads and we've we've mentioned them briefly. We'll do an episode on them probably eventually. Not that there's that much information out there about them, sadly, but they are gorgeous. They're really fun and really unique. Yeah, great, like pretty colors and, you know, a little sexy, but a little playful, kind of like the Playboy shoot, really. Mm -hmm. Totally. All right. So what's next? So she showed up to a couple of premieres in March. Uh, she went to the premiere of Circle of Friends, which makes sense because uh, Chris O'Donnell, who she was doing Mad Love, who had done Mad Love with, uh, is in that movie. Um, not sure why she went to the Tommy Boy premiere, but considering I just found some footage where she was hanging out with David Spade, I'm like, maybe that had something to do with it. I don't know. I was just going to say. <laughs> Yeah, because that footage would have been from from uh, what month in 95? June, and we'll get to that. But yeah, that's really interesting that we've been kind of realizing lately, you've been able to point out like, oh, re her going to certain premieres, you can kind of trace like, was it someone she wanted to work with? Was it a friend? Was it something? So it's interesting to try to think about what would have been her reason for attending this. Um, I, I love her look for the Tommy Boy premiere. And actually... Uh, I don't know if I should say what the podcast we were doing was, but the cardigan that she's wearing for Circle of Friends reminds me of something that she would have worn in the movie we just talked about. Doesn't it? Oh. <laughs> you are so right. It's absolutely, like, should we compare if it is the same? <laughs> it is really similar. I don't think it is the same, um, but it would be awesome to find that out that it was. Okay. Same vibes. I wonder if it's okay for us to talk about what we just recorded. Well, we can just say it was about home fries. How about that? Okay. The other thing I'm seeing is that it looks like Nancy attended the Circle of Friends premiere with her. So her longtime production partner, Nancy Juvonen. Yeah, you can definitely see Nancy in the background of a lot of event appearances in 95, which is cool because they were really, you know, getting flower films off the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Going back to that Tommy Boy premiere look, I feel like that one got ripped apart, like worse stress, which I don't really understand because it's just like a cute sweater and some flare pants and a butterfly yep. belt buckle <laughs> in a backpack. Like she just looks cute. Yeah. And the I feel like that belt feels so 95 Drew in a way that I don't even know if I can describe. Do you agree with me, though? <laughs> totally. It's like sums it all up. Just that belt. <laughs> and she's like wearing a backpack instead of wearing a purse. I don't know. It's really cute. Yeah. Then we start getting into some of the magazines. Another Ellen Worth for ID Magazine, which I believe is a British magazine. Is that correct? I believe so. Yeah. If it's not British, it's like definitely like a kind of a higher end oversized magazine. That's kind of like a not just like regular fashion magazine. It felt more like I don't know how to describe it. Like it, it, it I think it's at least slightly oversized, if not way oversized. I can't remember but really cute pictures that feel actually a lot like her Playboy. Yeah, there's definitely similarities for sure. She's also like got a little bikini. She's making cute little faces with her tongue and winking. And yeah, it's very, very similar vibes. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm also just thinking of like, kind of like on the cover of this one, she's like drinking a drink and in Playboy, there's definitely like a lollipop. So it might just be kind <laughs> yeah. of those similarities more than anything i can see that <laughs> um, and then we move into april so she somewhere around this time we can kind of guess it was in april she did a strip tease at this place called the blue angel mm -hmm. i'm just laughing to myself right now thinking about udi like that the <laughs> woman who owned it was named udi and david letterman like makes a big deal out about that name yeah i forget what he says like <laughs> hey udi <laughs> 
And then I just read today that um, that actually happened the day after she did the photo shoot for Mirabella. Oh, so that that was kind of a cool little thing to just come across when I was flipping through magazines today. Where did you read that? In Mirabella, it says the day after our shoot, she did a strip tease with her boyfriend, Eric Erlinson, something like that. <laughs> oh, my God. Awesome. Yeah. But that was kind of the precursor to what came next. <laughs> Yes. So the next thing, I mean, I guess I can take this one, even though I feel like, you know, it's a big one. <laughs> so what do we know the exact date? It was his birthday. Is that right? Correct. Okay. So, so on David Letterman, the Drew was actually talking about this blue angel experience. And then do you want to kind of say what happened, even though our, I'm sure our listeners know? Does anyone not know? <laughs> um, so <laughs> Drew's talking about it. She suddenly gets an inspire. You can just see suddenly she's like, oh, how about I'll do a little dance for you? And she asks Paul to put on some blues and she jumped on his desk and she's doing a sexy little <laughs> dance. And then she suddenly just decided to lift up her top and flash Letterman with her back to the camera. And uh <laughs> I feel like we could do an entire episode just on that appearance alone. Really, it's like we could go on and on. What would be super interesting about it would be to look at like reactions in like papers about it. Like I'd be really curious to see what like, like not that it would be interesting to see that people are critical of her because it was like, I it was iconic, is iconic. One when we mentioned a few minutes ago, like she wasn't often wearing a bra this this year or these few years within this time. And so you can tell like she didn't have to like lift her bra. She just lifted this little like shirt that was already kind of a midriff. <laughs> yeah. And I remember there was a, a little tidbit of Paul from like years later where he said he had the perfect Barrymore profile. Do you remember him saying that? <laughs> <laughs> yes oh my god gross but funny <laughs> i know it's not a an act you know it's not like a fake wedding it was a real flashing and <laughs> hilarious and i think i feel like drew has said like that was a really fun moment in her life she got it out of her system no oh, yeah definitely no regrets <laughs> And she said, like, this was kind of the end of that era. I mean, we'll see there's still a little bit more nudity to come in the year. But I think this one was so widely seen and talked about. And I mean, she's still so happy she did it. But I think she kind of felt like, OK, this is going to sort of be the end of my my stripping era. <laughs> OK, I thought of one more little tidbit. Am I correct in remembering that she says, like, sorry to Eric's mom? Yeah, as they're going to commercial. Yes, I forget what the, like, I think she just goes like, I'm sorry, but you, you can't hear her. Maybe she even says Eric's mom's name, but she's like apologizing because she knows Eric's mother would have been watching. Yeah, I think it, her name was Mary. I oh, feel like she says, sorry, Mary. That sounds right. But you know, when they come back, she's still just like, oh my God, I can't believe I did that kind of feeling. So it's just, you can't watch it and not just be endeared though, because she's so cute. And yeah, she's wearing that. I love that shirt that says I'm bananas over you. Like she's got all her like daisy necklaces and a flower in her hair. And she brought him daisies like it is peak 95 Drew. Yep, And it's yeah, it's extremely charming. Like I don't see how anyone could have found this ploying like it was very um, genuine, genuinely fun and genuinely playful. Yeah, so good. <laughs> She also went to the uh, premiere of a play called Indiscretions, like whatever. We don't know anything about that, but I just love her look. Yep. She has like a pink coat that she wears in some of them. She's got like that silky little bow dress. This was like such a look in that that year. Like I remember my friend Clarice having a couple of dresses that looked like this and mm -hmm. uh, it's just cute. Like she's dress, dressed up, but she's still grungy. <laughs> It almost looks like a baby doll dress, kind of slip like she will have an iconic slip look later. But I feel like as far as like clipping collecting, for some reason, there are so many clippings of this Indiscretions play premiere. Do you agree? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if like, yeah, maybe a, like many other known people didn't come or something. So all the photographers focused on her. Yeah, maybe. But there are a lot of photos and a lot of clippings. And she just looked like she's having a blast. Oh, totally. Um, one thing I'm also noticing, just because we can actually like link it back to us from later, um, she's wearing this like hemp necklace 
that's got like the beaded flower and then little like like three beaded flowers and then she also has another beaded necklace that i believe said like daisy or something on it so she was wearing it during the flashing and also at the premiere and i'm sure you remember that like some years later you and i both got like hemp braided one with the flowers and you had to help me figure out how to tie it yeah <laughs> so you like drew a, anyway you drew the like <laughs> illustration of how to do it do you remember oh that's right <laughs> like in paint yes I like drew it in paint like that's so funny yeah you found them on ebay and we both got them I wonder if I still have mine oh yeah I'm sure I do somewhere I don't know where it is but anyway we had we had necklaces that were like basically just like this because it was a very classic style like i feel like these were very common to find is the necklace that she's wearing in this <laughs> so good okay so we've got yet another eleanor von worth do you want to talk about this one i think we both really love german vogue uh, i this was like high on my to get list for so many years the german vogue the photos are just gorgeous she's wearing this cool little like bouffant blonde wig mm -hmm. get some nudity we get some tattoos we get some glamour uh it's just one of my favorites what's your favorite picture from it because i think mine might be um uh well there's two that i think i really love so i think i love the one where she's wearing like the blue kind of teddy and sort of like half in the shade and then also the one of her back where it looks like she's holding like a beer bottle Ooh, yeah, those are good choices. That's a really hard question, but off the top of my head, gut instinct, the first one I say is going to be the one where she's, uh, it's black and white. She's holding a cigarette. She's making a cute little face and you can see her butterfly tattoo. She's got like a halter top on. I just like that one. I go to instinctually. Yeah. So good. It's so interesting to me when something, a, a photo shoot is done for a foreign version of a magazine which has a domestic version so like why wasn't there a domestic vogue that featured these beautiful images it's so baffling to me yeah you could say that about the other magazine that came out that month yep okay so then the uk version of gq is another like really adorable shoot was this photo shoot also ellen von unworth no, this one is done by, I hope I don't butcher his name, but Farouz Zahedi. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, but um, personally, I don't know why this one doesn't uh, get me in the same way. I'm not as much of a fan of this one. So I have a weird thing where like, I feel like for a long time, I didn't know that all these images went together for some reason. Yes. There's definitely different setups in this one. Yeah. The other thing that is interesting is I believe the first 8x10 glossy that i would have bought of her in the red slip like leaning over with her elbow on her knee i think that's one of the like eight by ten photos that i bought on ebay in like probably 98 or 99. i knew you were gonna say that one so i must have ha i must have this knowledge too <laughs> yeah like it's it's definitely one of like the first things i would have bought online related to drew and now I'm like, I love it, but I don't love it nearly as much of, as other things. Like it's a, it's a cool shoot, but I feel like the ones that I like more are not like the cover or the other one where she's like with a guy on a bed. Like it's like the close yeah. up of her face. And then the one of her with the phone are just so cute. Like I, I almost, I think the reason I said that I thought maybe they were Ellen, cause they feel those two feel more like an Ellen von Unworth. That's totally true. Yeah, because they have more of a playful vibe and some of the rest are just like straight up sexy or glamour. And it's like n not as much of the fun side of Drew. Yeah, totally. Okay, so we'll move on to May. So she came on David Letterman for the third time this year to promote Mad Love and Batman Forever. And uh, she's wearing that really cute little like 70s looking green top that she has tied up like into a crop top and she's wearing like a silky silver skirt and uh that's a fun one but i'm kind of blanking on like specific stories uh, she's also wearing the like ribbon with a little heart charm on it that i think she maybe wears a couple times around that time period it's super cute again like clearly looks like 95 drew in fact the outfit kind of looks like something that her character in wishful thinking would have worn don't you agree 
<laughs> yeah, I can see that. Um, and I, I think they did spend quite a bit of time talking about the flashing because it only been a month. Uh, so that was still like a hot topic. And uh, I know she did talk about mad love because I remember when she's talking about um, her character being bipolar, people in the audience start laughing, which is just like such a sign of the times. Oh, weird. and she gets kind of mad and says like, don't laugh. And then she goes, you know what? Whatever. Just laugh. Fine. <laughs> and moves on. <laughs> wow. I didn't remember that. But yeah, that's definitely a sign of the times. Um, And then as Ashley said, she had been promoting Mad Love and Mad Love was released on the 26th of May. Um, that same month, the aforementioned magazine Mirabella was released, which I think only has a couple images, but I feel like those images are really pretty and like they don't really look like anything else. Yeah, I wonder if that's because they were done by Bert Stern, who had photographed um, one of Marilyn Monroe's last shoots. Oh, yeah. And they're, they are just like, they kind of have a very soft, very different look. They're really beautiful. Yeah. And yeah, there's only three photos if you include the cover and the contents, and then there's just one inside. And I don't think we've ever seen any outtakes. It's a, it's a cool one. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Our beloved interview magazine also came out that year, the one that had all of Drew's personal photos in it. And we love that one. <laughs> Sorry, I skipped right over that. That's a huge one, um, a really huge one. And I'm sure sooner than later, we'll be doing a, an episode about that interview magazine. Yeah, we'll have to. Although it's interesting, the cover of that one, is that the one with the Batman Forever picture as the cover? Yeah, it's kind of, it is very strange that the inside is all her personal photos, but for the cover, they used a promotional photo of her for Batman Forever, which was done by her Brits, which is cool, but it is an odd choice. Like you wonder how that decision was made. Yeah, totally. All right. So we have tons of stuff in June. Um, So we have a press conference for Mad Love. She has such a cute look here. I, I think maybe this might kind of... In opposition to when I mentioned there are so many clippings of the Indiscretions premiere, I feel like there are very few clippings of the conference. Um, and I love it, like everyone that I have. Do you agree? And do you know what I mean? Well, I instantly think, like, I feel like Anne loves this look every time I see it. Like, I feel like it's one of your favorites. So that totally makes sense. Okay. Yeah, for so for some reason, like she looks so cozy. It looks like she's wearing the necklace that I mentioned previously of like the ribbon with the heart, although it's kind of hiding by her sweater. But there's something like it just looks very natural. And we haven't seen any footage from this press conference as far as I know. The pictures I just love. I have like a five by seven or an eight by ten um printout of one of the pictures. Yeah. And then we've got the super adorable Time for Heroes event, which she attended with Eric Erlinson. And there are some really adorable photos of her kind of just like walking around at the event. Remind me again what Time for Heroes is. I believe we talked about this when we talked about 98, but I don't recall. Yeah. So um, it, this event was done, I think it was the Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation. And every year they would put on this, it was kind of like a carnival, I guess. And Drew attended 95 all the way through, I think, 99. So she was there five years in a row. Mm -hmm. And it's just like a fundraiser and a lot of celebrities would come and she just, my friend Angie actually worked for that foundation. Oh, cool. Um, after this, which sucks because imagine if she could have gotten me into one of these where Drew was there, <laughs> but um, totally, yeah, it, it's just a, there's something about her vibe that day that is also just so fun and adorable and playful. Yep. And uh, speaking of clippings. There's a really adorable clipping. Um, so in most of the clippings or images, however we want to put it, um, most of the, the pictures of her taken that day, she's wearing like a tank top. But there is one really cute clipping that was in in style where it's Drew and Eric Erlinson and she's wearing like a kind of a sheer or like translucent green shirt. And that clipping, I remember like when I finally got it, I was like, what? It's just from in style? Like, why did it take me so long to get a copy? <laughs> Do you know? I don't know. I feel like sometimes just like talking about the collecting experience is like might be relatable for people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
I know that is like something seems really special about that one. And I feel like it might be because she is wearing the green top over it in that particular shot. I don't know. It's a cute one. (laughs) It's really cute. It's super cute. Okay. This is going to be a a biggie. So, and a lot of people aren't familiar with this, I'm sure. So the TV show Extra, which was sort of like an entertainment tonight. Well, Jane Pratt, who at that time had Sassy Magazine and then later created Jane Magazine. She had a segment on Extra that was called Jane Pratt Mm One-on-One. And it's probably about 10 minutes, maybe even less. But I think... Every Drewby from the 90s, like, absolutely loves this footage. And it's because it follows her around for a couple days to some events. And they do interviews at Drew's house. And it's just, like, incredible access to her. And she's so cute and so fun in them. They, like, drive through McDonald's at one point. (laughs) And she wants a Happy Meal. Like, just really cool stuff. Oh, yeah. It's... It's like dreamy cool. No, we've kind of talked about things that where access is given. And I think having had like, even though we weren't fans at this time, like we knew that this was kind of like, oh my God, you have to see one-on-one like this. And then the aforementioned interview magazine, like getting these personal things about her. I think, yeah, I really do think that there was something about like, she just felt maybe safer being open about personal things i don't know there's like this is so it's not like she's like this is my address come over but it's <laughs> almost like that like you maybe feel like you're at her home yeah i mean you even see her like getting ready for the batman forever premiere and like doing her makeup which it's just really really cool yeah super cool speaking of the batman forever premiere we mentioned earlier tom snyder um, so the same day as the Batman Forever premiere, Drew was on time, Tom Snyder, and then the same thing she wore. Oh, wait. So was the was Tom Snyder after the premiere or before as far as recording it? It was before, right? Before, like they drive to that and then they drive to the premiere. Yeah. So she's wearing the same thing, which is like uh, two layers of slips. And then these images, <laughs> as far as what we're talking about clippings. But just like images from the Batman Forever premiere, for some reason, there are so many. And I think there's this thing where I've started to realize, you know, you see footage of people at premieres and how quickly they're photographed and by how many photographers. Why do you think that this look was so iconic? <laughs> wow. Um, I don't know. I mean, obviously this this event was a really big event. There's a lot of celebrity, like huge A-list people were in that movie. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it was attended by a ton of people. So I think the press was like huger than normal. And I think her being in just like a sexy little slip with like clearly no bra. You can like see her tattoos. She's like hamming it up on the red carpet with Eric. I think it made for good press. (laughs) And I think I just realized that the other reason probably why we have like so many images of it is because this would have been like peak (laughs) for her. Like she was so famous. Maybe I almost want to say that she was like more famous than she'd ever been in 95. Do you think that's fair to say? Yeah, I would say her star was definitely on the rise. And uh, yeah, she was in a lot of like tabloids and magazines. I would say... If if Ashley and I ever have to separate clippings, which we've had to do many times over the years, I feel like if there's anything unique, like, for example, from this, it becomes part of our, what we call a duke it out pile. (laughs) (laughs) Like, don't you agree? Like, this is one of the things, like, a lot of, like, 95 stuff ends up being kind of like, okay, we're going to have to revisit this. Like, it's not so obvious always. Although, I don't know, I feel like we could, we could, like talk more about this at another time like how we've acquired different collections and like why we have to split them I don't know maybe that's not an interesting conversation <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fun but yeah definitely 95 stuff goes in the duke pile very often <laughs> yes exactly and then Batman Forever was released um, on June 16th so what else we got from June this big month okay so yeah even though she only had a cameo kind of small role in Batman Forever it was pretty pretty iconic with the sugar and the lingerie and she looked so beautiful 
So it certainly helped her like keep getting press. Mm -hmm. And then she attended the K-Rock Weenie Roast. So K-Rock is a very popular rock station in LA and they did a huge festival every summer and Hole was playing along with so many other bands. It's crazy like what music was like that year. It's so cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is definitely, we've been talking about this on Instagram because I just found some incredible footage from this that MTV had done. But this look is like way up high on my like all time favorites. Describe it. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Okay. So she's wearing a yellow with flowers halter top and it's very cropped. So you can totally see all of her uh, front and back tattoos. She's got like low riding pants. And even like you can see like she's got cute little floral underwear that she like purposefully has like kind of sticking out the top (laughs) which sounds weird but totally works for her Mm -hmm. tons of daisies in her hair some of the time she's wearing a candy necklace it's just so good and like there's that footage from Jane Pratt's interview because Jane followed her to a bunch of events at this time where she's got like beer bottles in her pockets oh yeah about it it just looks so cool (laughs) Yeah, it's a really it's a really good look. Um, and the way that she has the daisies in her hair, like she was doing it a lot of times, like along the crown, like where you might have a headband. But with this look, with this weenie rose thing, she's got them like around the back of her head, and it looks so cool. <laughs> like it just yeah, you're totally right. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Love it. All right, then we've got like three other great magazine shoots. We've got UK Vogue, which is just like a really cool and kind of like reserved shoot, but the images are really neat. We've got UK Premiere, which is amazing. David LaChapelle. So really cool. I would say these pieces, these images are probably things that got reprinted like maybe more than a lot of things, especially around this time in other magazines really bright colors if you're familiar with david lachapelle you might already know these images but it's like bright yellows bright oranges um everything is like popped up contrast everything is like surrealist drew in like (laughs) how would you describe the like wedding thing so not only is she destroying a wedding cake but she's also just wearing like (laughs) like lingerie i don't know yeah because she has like the bridal veil on and i think this was kind of like a little like screw you to the world about her you know quickie wedding to Jeremy Thomas I think it was like a tongue-in-cheek play on that oh that's right like of course because there's so much there's so much stuff around this time like when we talk about like oh how short of a time it is between 98 and 95 I would say in 98 95 felt like a long time before and so when I think of like 95 and her marriage in 94 yeah sort of in my mind it feels like a long time but that's a very short amount of time like she had you know just a year ago been married very briefly like when this photo shoot was done okay so besides those two uk magazines which i don't know what was going on over in the uk but lucky for them that they got those (laughs) um we got rolling stone which we have a whole episode on if you want to go back and listen to that because we will go into depth on all those photos in the article and just what a classic beloved publication that one is absolutely so go all right so moving on we don't know a date on this but we're kind of guessing based on what she's wearing and her hair that it was right around this time um drew did an event with the wildlife way station which was sort of like an animal charity. How else would you describe it? They like saved actual really wild animals, right? It's yeah, I think so. It's like a foundation that it's probably like a nonprofit foundation that does work with um, all kinds of rescues. I'm not really totally sure. Yeah, but she went on to work with them for many years. So this Mm -hmm. was kind of the first time that we ever saw her with them. And so she was at an event for that. Um, with Diane Cannon. Do you remember when we saw her at Paquito Moss? Yes, I was just going to ask if that's who we saw, and I <laughs> yeah. actually still don't know who she is. I, yeah, I, I couldn't name one of her credits, but yeah, she, I think she was popular in like the 70s or something. Okay, got it. <laughs> okay, so 
then we get to the filming of wishful thinking which happened from kind of the summer through the fall there were lots of shots paparazzi shots on the streets of new york of her in wardrobe and she just happens to be extremely adorable in these in the clothing in this movie very strange movie <laughs> the episode we did uh, episode 11 with jonathan van meter that profile was done when she was doing promotional stuff for wishful thinking jonathan was uh telling us about how he lived in new york at that time and sort of like the scene that he was in that people were always seeing drew and eric out and so she was just kind of all over the place in new york at this time and pretty much the rest of the year i believe she was in new york yeah, so you should definitely go back and listen to that episode with Jonathan Van, Van Meter to hear just him kind of saying exactly what we just said, but in his own words. Which are much more uh, <laughs> eloquent, <laughs> professional, beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then another thing that we don't know when this happened, but um, we can also guess probably around here is that Drew filmed Saturday Morning Cartoons, which is a weird little I think it was only released to video maybe it was on tv once or something but it's basically Drew and her quote-unquote friends and one of them is Nancy Javonin so the other people we don't know who they are <laughs> um, and they're sitting around on a Saturday morning watching cartoons and commenting on them and all these alternative uh, artists at the time musical artists did covers of the theme songs from the cartoon shows so it's a fun one it's super cute and like in between every one of those there's like a little montage with drew and her friends and then they go to the next one it's super cute she's so like funny in it like she kind of has like an attitude in it mm -hmm. more than normal i would say like but like a fun just kind of cranky about waking up in the morning attitude <laughs> And she looks so cute. It's really cute and it's very 90s. Like, yeah. It's great. <laughs> um, and then we're moving on to July. So in July, Hole was doing dates for Lollapalooza in Vancouver and New York and other. And there are some really cool photos of Drew, I assume, whatever, behind the scenes, backstage at the shows. There's some footage that was done. Nardwar? That sounds right, like, like that? Nardwar. Okay. Um, yeah. He did an interview with Drew where she, like, seems, like, kind of annoyed with him. I think his whole persona was, like, I'm annoying. Like, that literally was. <laughs> yeah, that was his whole yeah. vibe. <laughs> but, oh, my God, the footage is so it's cool. It's really cool. And she's wearing that um, that shirt with the with the footprints on it. You know, she the had one for a long time a... later, right? Yes. Yeah, that she wore for years afterwards. Um, yeah. And I, do we still have that part on our website where it's got the wardrobe recycle? Yeah, we do. Okay. <laughs> Listeners, check out our wardrobe recycle if you want to see what we're talking about. Because she wore this like random t-shirt in, you know, and just happened to have it years later. For some reason, we're tickled by that. Like, it's one <laughs> yeah, of those almost that. like stars that are just like us. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They actually wear their clothes more than once. <laughs> yes. Um, and then there are some really cute clippings of one of the other shows. And Ashley, when you were talking about the look from that other weenie roast, I was picturing this, I realized. Yeah. It's very similar, except that it's a different kind of little crop top. But yeah, similar vibe. Um, and then that month, Movie Line came out, which... I love that article. It's one of my favorites, but the photos have never really been a favorite mm -hmm. of mine. What about yeah, you? Yeah, I've, I've never really, really loved them. The pictures are cool. And I think maybe we might appreciate them more if we like hadn't seen them a lot of times. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they, they were, were overused. overused and they're just very dark. And there are, I, I believe, like some kind of cool outtakes, at least from the leopard floor one or zebra floor photo. Yeah. But what I was going to say about this little easter egg in fight club oh yes is that they have a um a, a very small little snippet in the film where they have dripping water in like a basement or at the house in fight club and it's dripping onto a copy of this yeah great thing to point out i love that yeah and edward norton and drew were um had been roommates we mentioned in a previous episode so we can only maybe assume that Edward Norton had something to do with the placement or the choice of magazine. I'm certain. I remember uh, I was so into him. I was starting to get really into him at that time, mostly from him, like hanging out with Drew and 
I thought he was real. He seemed cool. I don't know. But um, <laughs> so I like purposefully, I was in college. So I had to like get a ride to go see Fight Club when it came out in theaters because I was just excited about it. And I remember like nerding out when they showed that magazine. <laughs> like, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was kind of cool. Um, and now uh, there's no kind of events that specifically date in August, but now we're in September of 95. Drew attended and presented at the MTV Video Music Awards. She had gone to the show with Courtney. Did Hole maybe perform? Yeah, I think so. That sounds okay. right because all of Hole was there. So they must have. Okay. But in this look, so this totally reminds me of wishful thinking. Oh, it's definitely, I think the dress must Probably have been is come that from one. This, well, the one in wishful thinking is white. But it's the exact oh. same cut style, everything. So maybe she like asked for one in black. <laughs> yeah, maybe. So it's like kind of a Marilyn-y look. So even though she had blonde hair that was growing out, she's wearing a blonde wig in this that has like a Marilyn kind of style to it. Not that dissimilar from the wig that she wore in German Vogue, although not so bouffanty. Yeah, right? you're right. Yeah. Um, yeah, iconic look. It's hard to describe the dress. It's kind of like vampy I was like literally gonna say the word vamp <laughs> oh that's so funny but it's got like these sheer kind of like almost wings for lack of a better word that she kind of can lift up and play with Ugh. really really cool iconic again iconic look there's so much stuff I keep saying iconic and I'm trying not but to but this one that. really is like the daisies yeah. in the hair it's like she looks so glamorous but also like still got the like dark lips like her 90s makeup yeah and I just wanted to point out that she presented a Video Vanguard Award to REM. That's what she was presenting. Got it. Good call. And it's funny because, like, I feel like we have we knew or know that she was kind of friends with Michael Stipe. But the only time I've ever seen any evidence, like a photo of them together or anything, was for the rehearsals for the VMAs. There's one picture of Oh, how of funny. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Weird. <laughs> And then she also, as we talked about in our Scream episode, so now I guess we're getting to the point in our podcast where we keep like referring back to our yes. own episodes, <laughs> but we talked about this, um, Drew and Nancy and supposedly some Weinsteins, bleh, um, they flew up to the Toronto International Film Festival because they were kind of courting Robert Rodriguez to potentially direct Scream mm -hmm. when Wes Craven had originally passed. Mm -hmm. So Drew attended the premiere of Four Rooms for that. And she's wearing a cute leopard coat, which uh, I believe is probably the one that she always references that she was wearing when she met Adam Sandler. I would imagine it was that one. <laughs> oh, cool. I don't I don't even remember that particular reference. Yeah, she's like said that she had purple hair, which we'll get to. Yeah. And a leopard coat. And, you know, he was probably in his usual like casual baggy shorts <laughs> or whatever. Like, very likely. Very likely. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of clippings, which I keep bringing up, there are some clippings from that four rooms thing that for some reason I love. This is another yeah. one where I feel like we covet it. But there's one like relatively common clipping and it's the sepia tone one. Yeah. Um, I don't recall. Do you recall what it's from? I want to say like teen or something. Kind yeah. Of basic. It's something basic, but it's such a cute. I don't know why. Like it is adorable. Just thinking about it. Like I had it on my bulletin board, I think for a long time because I always just really loved it. Me too. Yeah, I it's, I it's, too. it's a weird thing. So we're going to have to share that clipping. <laughs> okay. And there's hardly any photos from that. Yeah. Like, there's like five and that's it. So, um, and the only reason I even know Nancy's there is because there was some footage on some show at one point where it's true on the red carpet and you can see Nancy. Okay. Got it. Yeah. That sounds familiar. And now jumping to October, 1995, her hair, as Ashley mentioned, has got like a little bit of a purple tone to it, which I feel like was also referenced by Edward Norton, right? Yes. Because, yeah, oh, that's right. Because in every, Everyone Says I Love You. So she was, so of course she was still in New York because she would have been doing Everyone Says I Love You or at least yeah. had returned. <laughs> yeah. So she what, arrived to set with purple hair. Um, I All I remember is Edward. It's funny. we So many people we call by their first name, but we always say Edward Norton in full. <laughs> um, <laughs> he says like, she showed up with purple hair and you're just like, what? And then he's like, but then she puts on that wig and you go, oh yeah, you're a Barrymore. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That was the thing. I was thinking that for some reason there was some reaction by Woody Allen, but no. I wouldn't it was be like... surprised. <laughs> and you think of her characters. There's characters named Sky. 
Skylar. Okay, Skylar. Okay, yeah. So, like, you think of that character, and it almost has that, like, extremely soft-spoken, like... Super preppy. Yeah. <laughs> so I could totally see... That's right. I can actually almost picture Edward Norton saying it. Do we, is, was it him in an interview? Yeah, it's on, like, biography or celebrity profile or whatever. Okay. So she's got, like, not all of her hair is that color, but, like, the back portion of it. Yeah, it's cute. Definitely growing out at this point. Like, it's get it's approaching not shoulder length but it's getting a, it's like bob length yeah at this it's point. crazy how much longer her hair is at this point yep so as we said uh she's filming everyone says they love you at this time i really only could find evidence of it filming in october okay so it'd be interesting or maybe just her parts were filmed in october yeah because that seems incredibly short but um all of her new york stuff seemed to be filmed then because they also go to paris right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I don't know when that was done. But um, as we mentioned, she became good friends with Edward Norton and they ended up uh, sharing an apartment Yep. either during or right after this for a couple years. Yep. And as we said before, they were never an item. They might have had like one night stand, but <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> yeah, we don't know. it. We know that we haven't seen them together in quite some time or i don't think he's been on yeah. her show right oh that would be a good person to have come on her show yeah, i would that'd be love fun. to see them together oh my gosh because sometimes the show asks like who would you like to see we should suggest him <laughs> yeah that'd be fun and then i forget what this event actually is it's called city kids in new york i wonder if i'm wrong about this but i think blair from fish netflix had some involvement with Oh. whatever this organization was i feel like i've heard her talk about it we might have to ask her and i know that donald fazian is in some of these oh. pictures um and then she also attended the premiere of mighty aphrodite which makes sense because that was woody allen sorry yeah. trigger warning um <laughs> and there's cute pictures of her and Liv tyler and I don't know if you remember this, but Liv actually originally had a part in Everyone Says I Love You that got cut. Oh, I, if I knew that, I completely forgot. Yeah, I don't even know what the part was, but I think I've seen like even photos from it, like she actually filmed. But uh, so that would make sense why they, you know, kind of knew each other and were hanging out there. Yep. So then Drew attended with Jane Pratt, um, who did the one on one with her for extra earlier in the year. Um, Picasso at the Lapin Agil which was a, a play in New York. And she has a really cute look here. I feel like for a long time, I thought that these almost looked more like 1999 because her hair is like, her hair's like up. Yeah. Although now I'm looking at it again, I guess you can kind of see the purple is still kind of in there. And she's wearing, she's wearing like dark lipstick yeah, which is more of a 95 look but her jacket's really cute i love that jacket oh and did you want to say who we found out wrote that play oh and the play <laughs> was written by steve martin i would imagine that's why she went because i feel like she's always kind of liked his comedy yeah uh and she was hanging out with jane like there's a couple i didn't like note them all because it, it was just like candids or whatever but yeah. she was with jane a bit at this time and i don't know if you remember Jane, like, definitely at least implied that they had, like, a sexual relationship. Yes. But I don't know that Drew ever said, like, that was true. <laughs> yeah, maybe they... I don't think she did. I mean, I feel like Drew at least insinuated that she had some attraction to women, like, that she thought of herself as bisexual. Yeah, I just don't know if Jane specifically. Yeah. Like... Especially because she was very much with Eric at this time. So it's interesting. We'll have to ask <laughs> we don't her. Know this, we don't know the truth there. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the first question when we get her on our pod. <laughs> Before we go any further, we must know. <laughs> Did you ever have sex with Jane Pratt? <laughs> okay. And then let's move on to November, which is pretty much going to wrap up the year. So Drew attended the fashion show for Mew Mew, which she was no longer modeling for. But uh, I think her ads were still currently in magazines basically throughout the entire year because she did the spring, summer, and then also the fall, winter. Cool. Like two separate campaigns. So she came to that um, again with Nancy and then Tim Roth, who um, she was doing Everyone Says I Love You With. I absolutely love her look at this. Mm -hmm. Like the knee-high socks and the cute plaid coat and yep. sunglasses. Yeah, Just this this look might be like way up there for me okay i can I, totally get that i feel like this is one of the looks this is one of the like probably sets of 
clippings that we would put in the duke it out pile if we were oh, splitting collections for sure if we had clippings of this we yeah. would definitely be fighting over them <laughs> are there i feel like there are at least a couple of clippings right yeah there are i shouldn't have said like if we ever had we have much but if we had Something new ones new. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but yeah this look i don't i i mean again i'm loving this jacket yeah it's so cute so cute and all the pictures are really awesome from it yeah, I don't know what was going on. It just feels really cool. Yeah, I guess I guess a fashion show is a pretty hip event. So yeah, that's <laughs> maybe true. they had the lighting all right and everything. <laughs> maybe. And uh, she attended a lot more events in New York. So we know that she was still there quite a bit um, through November. And uh, there's a really cool, I don't remember like a lot about this, but seeing the images, I do kind of remember the visual at least, there was an interview done about flower films in Drew's New York apartment. Do you remember anything from it specifically? Yeah. So first of all, it was done by E and she just kind of talks about flower films a bit. I don't I actually don't remember what she's talking about when she's, they kind of interview her sitting on the couch. One thing I remember is they ask her something about like fashion and she talks about how like she was on the worst dress list, but then they wanted her on the cover and she's just like, what? Make up your mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, then there's also footage of her and Nancy like working together at a desk, which is really cool because this is like early flower films. Like they didn't even have an office yet, you know? Yeah. And that is really neat to see. And there's like a super old school, gigantic laptop, like <laughs> very early, awesome 90s. And also her apartment has like, the cloud walls which are so fun yes um so a couple things that i thought of first of all we will do a flower films episode of this podcast um for sure there's so much stuff to talk about like from the history of it of even just how like drew and nancy came to know each other but also just like what all the stuff they've done since like you know they're now producing drew barrymore show <laughs> like what a way to work your way up through the system with yeah this amazing leader but also when we interviewed Tony, he had mentioned that he was in one of Drew's old apartments in the West Village. And oh, yeah. <laughs> we were curious if maybe it was this apartment. It'd be really cool to find out for sure whether it was that if she did, in fact, like have this apartment still from then. That would be awesome. And if the walls were still painted like clouds. Oh, <laughs> I doubt it. But that would be really, I doubt it, that'd yeah. be really cool if that was the <laughs> that case. Would be fun. <laughs> and then that's basically it for the year. Uh, December, we know that like Hollywood sort of shuts down. So, you know, she must have just been doing personal stuff. Uh, she didn't reemerge in the spotlight until January of 96. So, whoo, that was a lot, though. She got around. <laughs> yep in a good way <laughs> and like the you know you have to you have to check out our images from this if you're not already familiar with the iconic looks that we're talking about like go to our instagram go to our website because we'll have lots of visual aids that i think are really important for this year yeah um, i mean of course we can talk about the events but I, I think unfortunately for an audio podcast it's really hard to get across some of the the really impactful things, which are about the aesthetic of Drew from 1995. Definitely. And if you don't already know, every episode we put, it, it gets its own page on howdoyoudrew.com. It's just really easy to find them. And each one, we have all the photos that correlate to what we talk about in order. So you can follow along. We also put links on there to anything relevant. So always go check that out after you're, or during you're listening to the episode, because it will really enhance the experience Absolutely. for you. Absolutely. And we work hard on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to this really fun trip down memory lane. We know that 95 is a really special year to everybody. So we hope you enjoyed reliving it through uh, audio podcast form. <laughs> <laughs> and if you did enjoy it, go and rate, review, and subscribe, please. Um, I mean, we appreciate you coming and listening. But if you're not doing those things, too that would really make uh, you extra special in our books. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> and then you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at how do you drew pod. Send listener mail to how do you drew pod at gmail.com. As we always say, it can be anything. We would love to hear about your favorite 1995 drew look, or you know what your favorite drew look from any time in her life. How about that? Anyway, reach out to us. <laughs> Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next Thursday.
Bye. Thank you. Bye. The How Do You Drew podcast is researched and produced by Ashley and Anne from thedrewseum.com. Our theme song is by our dear friend, Matt Costa, and we'll see you next Tuesday.